I guess the final thing that I'd add to all of that is if you're someone with more anxious patterns and you're listening to this and you were hoping that I was going to give you the perfect script to deliver the voicing of a need in a way where your partner was guaranteed to not get defensive. (laughs) Uh, I can't give you that, right? And I, I wouldn't want to give you that because I think a really big part of your work as someone who's more anxious, I say your work, but it's also part of my ongoing work, is recognizing that I can only control so much and that it's much less about delivering the perfect script in the perfect way with the perfect tone so that my partner responds in the exact way that I want. That's really just me being controlling and manipulative, right? It might be with the good intention of avoiding conflict or getting a need met, um, but it's it's kind of an overreach, right? It's that over-functioning, you know, if I can just tiptoe around everything and do it in the perfect way, then I'll never have to rock the boat. So it's really an extension of, of my stuff or your stuff to be doing it in that way. And so I really think the better approach is actually to just wade into the messiness of it and to be you know honest and open-hearted and to share what you're needing to share and to be willing to be wrong or be willing to apologize be willing to kind of see what happens in a conversation and be surprised rather than needing to rehearse it a million times and putting this huge amount of pressure on yourself to curate the moment so that it plays out the way that you want and then blaming yourself if it doesn't or blaming them because they're so unreasonable because you said it in the perfect way and they still got defend right all of that is really uh, even though as I said it's coming from a good place I'm sure that is actually keeping you entrenched in the same patterns because it's an extension of that part of you that just wants to eliminate risk and control everything rather than actually be vulnerable uh, so trust that with a level of open-heartedness with a level of genuine curiosity. So like I'm showing up to this moment with totally fresh eyes and no expectations and I'm just going to see what happens and see what's here and ask questions and listen to the answers, right? I'm not going to coach you. I'm not going to try and steer you one way or the other. I just want to be in this moment present with you um, and see what happens, see what might be different from that place because as you will have heard me speak about before, so much of our what we transmit to each other in particularly intense moments when our nervous system's really on on high alert, so much of it is nonverbal and so much of it is, you know, way beyond anything we could ever write down in a neat script. Um, so I think that recognizing that so much of our communication is from the heart and from the body rather than the words that we say Um, and feeling into our responsibility there and recognizing how powerful it is when when we start to change the way that we show up in that respect Um, and just trusting that we can figure it out and that even though the person that we're in a relationship with might not always respond the way we want, um, that every response is you know, based in some sort of need or some sort of pain or some sort of fear. Uh, And that if we really want to build healthy relationships that are based on deep compassion and security and care, that that's part of our responsibility is to seek to understand our partner's pain and fear and sensitivities rather than just trying to make them suppress that or convince them why they don't need to feel that way uh, because it's uncomfortable for us.